Testing your maximal finger strength is a key part of most training sessions on a fingerboard and also understanding your physical profile in terms of the forearm flexor strength. So it has two main uses and at Lattice we use a lot of fingerboard testing and what I want to do in this video is give you a guide to, to how you do both single arm and two arm testing so that you're equipped to be able to do any of that testing on your own or with someone else and use the best possible practice that we use here with any of our testing and you can replicate those exact same methods. One thing to point out, which is hopefully should be obvious, um, but I want to state it anyway, is that any maximal testing does carry a risk of injury. We're working right to the point of failure here. So be aware that this has a risk when we do any of this testing and you want to make sure you're extremely well warmed up, you're familiar with the methods that we're using within fingerboard testing and that you've used the equipment before starting your testing process. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover firstly is the equipment we're going to be using for any of the testing. So on this board here today, we're going to be using both single arm and two arm testing. So we're going to be talking about the weights, the pulley setup, the body position, everything involved in the testing process. We're also going to talk through the grip positions that you're going to use when you're testing and some of the specifics around how we rotate and turn underneath the board. So that shoulder positioning, a lot of questions we get around that. So we're just gonna talk through the options available to you and what the best practice is in that. Next is the positioning on the pulley setup as well, whether we go to the left, the right or central. In terms of the testing itself, we we'll talk through the progressions and how quickly we move through those weights and making the intensity harder and harder. And then finally, what we do around the point of failure and the actions we take in terms of when to stop the testing and what kind of figures we record when we're doing that benchmarking. So before you start your session and you're gonna be doing either single arm or two arm testing, there's some key equipment that you wanna get set up and you really wanna get this right because it's gonna affect how the testing works in terms of one, the um, validity of the results that you see in the testing, and two, also some of the comfort that you're gonna see during that testing. We wanna be both comfortable and also have valid and reliable results. So first off is our pulley setup. Now, it's really important that you're gonna use a good quality pulley in your testing. And you can see here is the wheel on the pulley here is a relatively large size wheel. And you'll, you'll find in the market there are some really cheap, poor quality pulleys. And the issue with this is that if the wheel itself, if you can't turn that wheel very easily and you have a lot of frictional assistance which occurs in that wheel, then you're gonna be getting too much help from the weight that we place in that pulley. So make sure you've got a high quality uh, wheel within that pulley. A larger wheel's generally better. And then secondly, coupled with this, and I think it's something that a lot of people don't realize is that the width and um, flexibility of the cord that you're putting the weight on on both sides is really important as well. So here I think we have around a six or seven mil thickness of cord, and that's about as thick as you want to go. I, I quite like using a five or six mil cord. If you go all the way up to 10 mil in terms of cord width, you're gonna see way too much assistance in that pulley, especially when you're getting up to 10, 20, even 30 kilos of assistance. So make sure that that cord is thin, flexible, and provides no assistance. Next up is your harness or weight belt setup. Uh, this one's a modified harness. Uh, it's had the leg loops taken off it. I can put this on and then I can attach the weights really comfortably to the belay loop on the harness. Another setup is using a dipping belt, which is a really nice way of doing things. Um, this doesn't work so well for an upward pull. So if the weight is coming from above you and pulling your waist up, uh, whereas a harness will work better for that. But if you're hanging weight off you, this is really nice, especially if you're gonna get above 40 kilos in terms of additional weight. This chain here means that you can attach plenty of weight to it and you're not having any problems with discomfort in your lower back and it's really spreading the load. So really recommended at that kind of 40 kilo or above mark. Next up is the handle or the assistance that you're gonna use on your pulley setup and that's gonna enable you to actually pull down and use that assistance. 
This is a, a quite a heavy uh, roller bar that we use here. Um, you can use a tennis ball attached to rope, you can use a, a bunch of knotted rope, anything which is comfortable and you can really use the assistance that you have on. So don't go for just a single strand of rope, it's quite hard to hold on. If you've got 20 kilos of assistance, you're just not gonna be using the weight that you've put onto the other end of the rope. And lastly, I think it's quite useful to have a section of chain or sling, which you can use to put through the weights when you're adding these onto either your harness or the pulley system. So here you can see I've got my plate with five kilos and I've actually got a, a sling on this system here so that I can attach that to my harness or to the rope. Likewise, you could use the chain system as well, but make sure that's really strong, nice, simple way of fixing to your harness or the rope. The last thing that you need to get right in terms of your equipment is this thing here, which is your fingerboard. Now, we recommend that the testing that you do is done on a 20 mil edge. We have an edge designed specifically for this. And once you get that edge prepared, you need to make sure it's clean, dry, and well chalked before you do your testing. There's nothing worse than trying to hang on a greasy or caked up with chalk edge. So take your time, brush it down and prep it for those maximal hangs so you get the very best intensity and quality out of your testing session. So once you've set up all the equipment that you have for your testing session, you're gonna be getting on with the session itself and you're gonna complete a full and comprehensive warm up for both the forearms and the shoulders. You'll see that in the description, we have links to some of the other warm-up sessions that we have on our YouTube channel. So go and have a look at those if you want some guidance in terms of a fingerboard work warm-up to do. And first thing you're gonna do is select your grip position on the board. And you'll notice within our testing is we actually have a number of different grip positions that we're using. Whether you're following our test protocols or your own, you want to make sure that the grip position that you use on the board behind you is appropriate in terms of the training history you have and the experience level you have on a fingerboard. And secondly, is you're staying really consistent with this grip position all the way through your testing. So don't be tempted to carry on through the weights and the progressions if you're starting to move out of your selected grip position and you're opening up, you must stop then. So make it really consistent in terms of the grip position. So first up is the shoulder position in terms of the two arm hangs. And what we're looking for here is a midway engagement position on your shoulders. So that's the amount of travel and depression of the scapula that we see on those two arm hangs. So if I show you the full range of movement that we have on a two arm hang is we have totally disengaged and relaxed at the bottom here. And then we have fully engaged and overly contracted here. And what we want to do is come down to this mid position when we're doing our hangs. So totally relaxed, over engaged, mid position. That's the position we want to do for more, most of our testing on that two arm hang. Another thing that you will notice is my torso and lower back stays perpendicular and underneath my shoulders and head when I'm doing that hang. I'm not rotating and bringing my torso forwards over that hang. And then likewise, when I'm doing my hang, I'm not arching my back and bringing my feet way underneath me. A nice perpendicular, relaxed position. It's particularly important when you get into quite heavy weighting from that dipping belt or harness and you're doing very, very hard maximal hangs. Try and keep a really straight, uh, relaxed body in terms of that chest and uh, core or abdominal position. So when it comes to single arm hangs, there's a lot of, there's a lot more variability and options available on this. And you'll see whether you look at photos or videos of other people doing these single arm hangs, people take all sorts of different positions. And the reality on this is that there is no right or wrong in the testing that you're doing for these single arm hangs. But I wanna show you some best practice and some of our kind of preferences in terms of how you do that. So first up is that we wanna make sure the shoulder is engaged on that single arm hang. So if I'm taking my edge here and I'm using my, the assistance on my pulley, is that what I don't want to see is I don't want to see a totally relaxed arm position here, totally disengaged, 
I want to see some engagement in that shoulder on that hang. So relaxed, engaged. Secondly, is that I don't want to see a big lock on that arm position on the hang either. So I don't want to have any testing where I'm grabbing my assistance and I'm jumping right up into the top of that hang there. I want to be coming from at least op more open than 90 all the way down to close to 180 degrees. It is okay to be hanging with a totally straight arm if the shoulder is engaged. We're very happy with doing that. We do also see with a number of people when they're testing on their finger strength on one arm is the tendency and the need to turn and rotate inwards with the shoulders. And I'll give you an example of this in a second. And I see this a lot more in root climbers typically, and this is perfectly okay and valid when you're doing your single arm testing. So this position is gonna look like grabbing our assistance on the pulley here. And rather than staying square on with our hangs in this position here, is I'm rotating and I'm turning underneath the board. And this is okay to do, quite happy with that. Likewise, sometimes people will bring their knees upwards and do those really hard hangs. Again, this is okay. I'd say it's not as ideal to bring the knees really, really high and people kind of tuck right up into this fetal position on the board. I'm not quite so keen on that. Try and stay a little bit more straight on the torso. But whether you turn under the board or stay open, that's still valid and reliable as in terms of a finger strength testing result. With any of your single arm hangs when you're using the assistance of a pulley, so you've got your weight on one side and you're grabbing the rope on the other side to take body weight off, is the pulley setup and position can be strangely crucial in terms of the testing. So a couple of things to watch out from this or watch out for on this is that one, you haven't set up the pulley so it's the rope is on the wrong side. So you can see if I grab this pulley here now, I'm getting a lot of twist and assistance in the rope. So really I should be setting that pulley up the other way around so that when I do my hangs, that pulley runs free. So that's one really important thing. And then the secondly, or the second thing is that when you're doing your hang, you're not getting assistance on the other side of the rope with your forearm or your body when you're doing those hangs. So position that bolt or attachment point for your pulley either off to the side or further back from your body so it's not providing any kind of assistance. I've seen this a number of times now where people are doing the hangs and they've either got their thigh or their knee or their elbow against that rope. And I mean, you could get two or three kilos of additional assistance out of that pulley setup if you start to cheat it. So be really careful on that. So I've got my sling, carabiner and weight set up. And because I'm starting off on the testing session, I wanna put plenty of weight on. So it feels relatively comfortable on the first few hangs. So I've got 15 kilos on one side here. I've got my half crimp grip position. And I'm gonna make sure that I get my shoulders into the right position there. I'm gonna really make sure I use the assistance that I have on the other side. And I'm not gonna be turning under the board in this case. I'm gonna stay more square on with my hang. So one, two, three, four, five. That's my hang completed. Felt reasonably comfortable, still working quite hard. And now I can bring my weight down by, I recommend around two, two and a half kilos at a time. So not massive jumps unless you felt so comfortable on the first hang that you're thinking, I could take this down by five or 10 kilos immediately. But that felt relatively difficult, so I'm gonna be taking it down in smaller chunks now. So I'm gonna drop that down from 15 kilos to 12 and a half. So I'm four reps into my testing now, and I've reduced the weight of my assistance all the way down to seven and a half kilos. And I'm gonna be doing another test on this same grip position again, same single arm position. And I'm gonna go one, two, you can see now that I'm actually opening up out of that half crimp grip position at seven and a half kilos. So I held that for maybe two and a half, three seconds, but then I started to open out into a four finger drag. So that's my point of failure at seven and a half kilos. I'd previously, previously been successful at 10 kilos. So that's the score that I'm gonna mark on this one. So right arm, half crimp grip position, 10 kilos, success, seven and a half, failure.
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the options for how we're gonna do the additional weight added to body weight via a harness or dipping belt system and attaching weight to that point. And here I'm gonna start with relatively lightweight because I'm just building up to my maximum intensity. I've got 10 kilos added here, a nice secure uh, sling system and a central point on my harness. It's really important that when you attach that to your waist, is that it feels really comfortable in terms of the lower back and the loading. And secondly, that that weight doesn't hang so low that there's gonna be any chance of this touching the floor because it's surprising how much when you're working at really high intensity that you can forget that you might be getting just a tiny little bit of assistance to the floor. So be really careful about that, that you've got it in the right position. I'm gonna take a stance on my fingerboard using a half crimp grip position, two arms, and then from there, hanging nice and perpendicular, board, perpendicular on the board, shoulders engaged and torso in a nice perpendicular position, maintaining that position all the way through the hangs and I put my feet down again. So it feels really comfortable and I'm quite happy to significantly move the weights up from here. So I wouldn't be adding just two and a half kilos to this 10 kilos now. I'm quite happy to move, add another 10 kilos onto this one because I feel really quite a long way off my maximum intensity. I'm at rep four now on my two arm testing and I've got 30 kilos added to my harness. Starting to feel really quite hard now and I'm making sure that I'm maintaining both the grip position and that shoulder position on those hangs. So I'm gonna have another attempt now to achieve a five second hang. And five, four, three. Okay, so you can see there, I was just starting to open out on that strict half crimp grip position into a four finger drag halfway through that hang. So that's the point where I'm going to record failure. I failed at 30 kilos. My previous hang at 27 and a half kilos was successful. So that's the point that I'm going to record in my test results that I was successful at 27.5 kilos. When it comes to the testing that we do for lattice, we have a prescribed one and a half minute rest between those hangs and whether that's sub-maximal and you're still slowly building up through the progressions or all the way to the point of failure, we use a one and a half minute rest. And it's really important that you're achieving your maximum, so that point where you're finally failing before eight reps are up. If you don't have this and you fail to get to your maximum before eight reps, it's likely you're carrying too much cumulative fatigue during that testing session, and it's better to come back and test another day. Finally, last point is that if you're doing a testing session and you really feel like you just weren't on your best form, nothing felt quite right, you didn't achieve the results that you really thought you deserved, then it's totally okay to come back on another day and test again because you've got time, you might as well get the right results and get something that really represents your form that you have in terms of your forearm flexor strength. So just come back and repeat those tests again. If you found this video useful, then please do click to like, uh, subscribe to us if you wanna see more of this content and you wanna receive notifications of that. And if you have any questions about the testing or the data associated with it, drop us an email and we're really happy to answer any questions.